everyone. My name is Dipanshu. I've been an IB educator for the last eight years, and I'm also the co-founder and CEO of Toddle. I welcome you all to Toddle's first ever event for DP educators, the IBDP Thinkathon. Spread over three weekends, the Thinkathon will feature over 25 sessions focused on unpacking assessment principles and practices within the IBDP. Over the past two years, we at Toddle have worked closely with TYP and MYP teams at 1,000 plus schools around the world and supported them in delivering meaningful and personalized experiences to their students. I'm really excited that we will soon be unveiling our DP platform. Our all-in-one DP platform will support teams with all aspects of teaching and learning in the DP, whether it be curriculum planning, internal assessments, external assessments, progress reports, family communication, POK, CAS, extended essay, everything in one place. As we build Toddle for DP, it is really important for us that voices of DP practitioners from around the world get reflected in the platform. We've already started working with around 50 DP schools uh, in different parts of the world. And I would love to invite you to be a part of this journey where we would love to get your feedback on the platform to make sure that we are building something that truly works for you. All we will need is two hours of your time. So in case you are interested, you will find a link in the chat. Uh, you can sign up there and uh, someone from our team will reach out to you. Thank you. I hope you find this session really meaningful and I hope you enjoy the IBDP Thinkathon. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the session. Hello. I can see. I can see people are still joining in. We have fifteen participants in already. Welcome. Welcome to the IBDP Thinkathon. Uh, my name is Kripa, and I'm a part of the team at Toddle that creates virtual learning experiences like this one for you. Um, as we wait for others to join, since I think people are still joining in, we'd love to know where you're joining us from. So please put your name and city in the chat box. And while you do that, make sure you uh, reply to everyone. I don't see anybody uh, introducing themselves in the chat box yet. I see Neha Pandit, hello Neha. Hi, Shubha from Badodra. Hi, Shagun from Jaipur. Hi, Nalufar from Bombay. Amy from Bahrain. Hi. Ashwani from Gurgaon. Hello, guys. Welcome, welcome. We'll, I think people will keep uh, joining and we'll uh, keep letting them in. Um, but let's, let's, let's start the session. And in this previous video uh, that you saw, uh, our founder, Dipanshu, mentioned that Toddle is currently used by over 1,000 PYP and MYP schools. So, uh, Shali, if you could go to the second slide, please. Uh, so, like you can see, we're used, uh, Toddle's currently used by over a thousand uh, PYP and MYP schools, and we have schools from all over the world, uh, that is the US, Asia, Pacific, Europe, and the Middle East. The program is available in Spanish as well, and just like Toddle for PYP and MYP, Toddle for DP will be a comprehensive end-to-end -end teaching learning solution, um, and the platform will have the following features, uh, curriculum planning and resource library, DP core modules, assessment and feedback, progress reports, student portfolios, family communication, classroom management, and streamlined authorization and evaluation. We're, we're doing a quick walkthrough to show you the DP planning module today, which is at 10.45 GMT. So uh, please try to you know, join into that session. I'm going to drop the link to that session in the chat box for everybody. So that's where you can um, watch this walkthrough that Ms. Ba will conduct for you. Um, yeah, so that's that's a bit about Toddle. And uh, now on today's 
subject specific workshop in this session we'll be gaining insights into applying assessments criteria into students artistic explorations with our guest speaker shali mahajan so welcome shali um shali comes with 15 years of teaching experience in the ibdp visual arts and currently teaches in india at pathways world school aravli um she's an ibdp principal examiner for comparative study visual arts since 2016 and in 2021 shali was appointed by the ibo as a senior examiner uh, team leader and leads the online webinars for comparative study furthermore she has been leading the ibdp standardization meetings for november june sessions since 2016 at the ib global center in cardiff uk uh she's also attended the ibdp visual arts grade award meetings for many many years please bear in mind that this workshop has been produced independently of and is not endorsed by the ib it is not intended to be a replacement for the official um ib workshops views and opinions expressed by the speaker are personal based on experience and should not be construed as official guidance by the ib uh if you can now shally move to the housekeeping slide uh like you can see um this is a meeting and we request you to have your videos turned on but please be on mute because this would really help us listen to what shally has to say clearly um type in any questions that you have into the chat box um and at various times uh, shally will ask you to pause and reflect so use the chat feature to interact and while tapping in uh, while typing into the chat box like i said make sure you reply to all panelists and attendees um this webinar like i said earlier has been developed independently from and is not endorsed by the ib uh we thank shali for generously sharing her learning pro bono at uh, the dp thinkathon uh if we can move to the next slide shali finally don't forget to share your learnings from this session using the hashtag dp thinkathon and tag toddle across all your social uh, media now without any further ado shali over to you thank you so much kripa uh, she has already spoken so much about me so <laughs> i want talk about me right now but yes uh, as a um, teacher from last 15 years i have learned a lot and uh, uh, from 15 years i have actually taught my students not like students they are budding artist for me so uh, i listen to them i understand what is their ideas and uh, how they can incorporate how they are um you know overcoming from struggles and a uh, lot of problems while making art so it's it's a it's a beautiful journey for a teacher and student journey it's not only student's journey i would say it's our journey as a teacher so it's uh, and i'm also going to unpack today uh, you know the assessment criteria as i know many of you may be coming with a lot of experience you already know the assessment criterians so but um, if i am talking here it doesn't mean that i know more than you guys i know you all are experienced and you are uh, wonderful uh, educators and uh, you might be having more experience than me so but we will learn from each other i wish that uh, you know i i'm sure this session is going to be uh, very successful for all of us and will interact engage and learn from each other so now i'll not talk much about uh, these things i'll straight away go to the session so where we are going to consider core areas key features of the curriculum model assessment criterions and the requirements of internal and external components marking samples we are going to mark samples the type of assistance and guidance teacher should provide for future candidates and most importantly uh, academic honesty issues so when i am talking about assessment criteria and how we should guide our students uh, these are very much aligned with our subject subject reports uh, which uh, comes every session by principal examiner so uh, there are some common faults done by our students you know many times we feel that 
they should get seven, but they didn't uh, achieve seven, you know, at the end. So I feel that those common faults we can solve and we can guide them and we can tell them that how you can achieve highest mark time or maybe how they can get be best from them, you know. So this is core area, visual art core syllabus at SL and HL consist of three equal interrelated areas as shown in this figure, which is communicating visual arts, visual arts in context, visual arts methods. Now these core, area, these core areas are designed to fully interlink with our assessment tasks, which are component one, two and three, and uh, must be the central planning for all the teachers when they are designing and delivering their course or their curriculum to the student. So students are also required to understand the relationship between these areas and how each are informs and impact their work. So I will talk a little more deeper about this core areas. You must be aware of, of it because it's in our visual art guide. So we have three practices for these core areas, theoretical, practice, art making practice and curatorial practice. Now these practices are very much linked with our components. As you can see here, how theoretical uh, will be a part of component one and two and art making practices part of component two and three. And then we have curatorial practice, which is component three exhibition. So as you can see here, how these are linking with each uh, component like how students examine and compare the works of artists from different cultural background and how these uh, influence their own art making process. And uh, students look at different techniques for making art, which is again part of our uh, component one and two. And then students explore uh, ways of communicating through visual and written means. So now we have three, again, these paragraphs you can see, which are linking very well with visual art in context, methods and communicating visual arts, art making practice, which is part of component two and three. Students make art through a process of investigation, thinking critically and experimenting with techniques. And students experiment with diverse media and explore techniques for making art. Students produce a body of artwork through a process of reflection and evaluation. So now we have curatorial practice where you know we have again three uh, main areas which we explore students develop an informed response to work and exhibitions they have seen and experienced how they formulate personal intentions for creating and displaying art and uh, how they communicate meaning and purpose with the nature consider the nature of exhibition and how it is impacting the different audiences Students select and present resolved works for exhibition and artistic judgments impact the overall presentation. So I found this very interesting uh, table uh, from ibpublishing.iborg. Uh, this is a very nice uh, website where actually you get a lot of uh, resources, samples and glossary, which is a huge amount of glossary, which I don't see in a visual arts uh, guide. So there are some ideas regarding different ways of recording artistic processes and learning in our uh, three components. As you can see here, bullet points, which are very much linked with our uh, assessment criterions and um, uh, the areas just now I showed you. I'll straight away go to now external component, which are component one, comparative study. Part two process portfolio, as you can see here, there are some assessment criterions and these are external assessments. And uh, we have internal assessment criteria, SL and HL. Uh, we, you can see here uh, exhibition part three. So it's very important to understand the difference between external and internal component. Now external component is marked by an IB examiner here. As a teacher, we are going to guide our students. We are not going to mark our students' work. And uh, in internal assessment, uh, we mark as a teacher and moderate it externally by an IB examiner. So comparative study for SL and HL, it's 20% uh, of marking assessment. And uh, we have criteria A to E is for SL. Uh, all carries six marks and we have HL. 12 marks for uh, uh, HL students. So what is comparative study? 
now here uh, first of all i think as teacher it's our responsibility to guide our students and uh, you know uh, help them to understand uh, why we are doing comparative study and uh, what kind of artist we choose because i have seen many comparative study while checking that you know they choose very uh, contemporary artists sometimes very uh, artists from instagram social media so which is i think it, we should not uh, encourage them to do so it's always good if they choose some famous artist uh, because they will uh, this is a written component and they have to do lot of research so it's good if they can take some famous artist and research about them so students analyze and compare different artworks by different artist this independent critical and contextual investigation explores artworks objects and artifacts from different cultural context another thing is if they will not examine and compare at least three artworks by at least two different artists they will not be able to achieve more than two marks in criteria a to c and three in d so they they should choose three artworks and uh, 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 there is a sl requirement which is 10 to 15 slides uh, where they are just uh, focusing on criteria a to e and we have hl who are going to do 15 to 20 slide they are going to focus criteria a to f so um bef before uh, talking about you know everything i think it's it's very important for us to understand about each and every criteria what is the requirement for criteria some reminders before starting to mark and guide students for criteria a first of all it's not iconography it's not symbolism it's not commission and patron political social economical context it's it's basically a detailed observation on the basis of elements and principles of art so it's very important because uh, i have seen many uh, uh, you know uh, responses where students uh, um, suppose they take farida khalo as one of the artists so they start writing symbolism about it so they lose marks for criteria a because symbolism is basically it's formal it's not formal analysis it's function and purpose so they might get really good marks in uh, function and purpose but they are losing marks for formal uh, qualities so and another thing it's very important to understand the headers which are marked descriptor so when they are getting one to two mark means they have written very limited or maybe they have written some wrong analysis so uh, when they are getting three to four marks um, the analysis are very descriptive when they are reaching to insightful and informal informed identification they are going to 5 to 6 mark band and a very important consistency you know suppose they have done uh, you know for two artworks they have written really well but in third artwork they are losing consistency so they might end up with 5 out of 6 marks they won't achieve uh, full marks for this criteria i have a very good example of uh, detailed insightful analysis uh but still you know the student have added some criteria b and c as well so this student might uh, go to you know uh, reach to end up with maybe five mark not six full marks because there are some analysis which are linking with other criteria so when you are guiding your students make sure they are uh, when they are writing analysis they are just focusing on all principles and elements of art they are focusing that how the artist have uh you know created this piece how the uh, is this balanced or symmetrical work or what is the emphasis uh, emphasis on this so all these elements and principles of art should be uh, analyzed so some reminders before starting to mark and guide students for criteria b which is function and purpose now uh, it's very important what is function and purpose function and purpose is meaning idea theme of the work look at imagery signs and symbols artistic expressions is the work ceremonial or ritual or functional so students should not write their own opinion here i have seen many times students start writing their own opinion so it, they are not going to get one to two marks if they are writing their own opinion it must be supported with informed research so again as a teacher we should understand that our students whether they are 
whether they are uh, achieving one to two level or they are moving forward or you know they are getting five to six marks because the work is consistent so this is example of function and purpose why i kept every time one example so that you can see how uh, you know the uh, the work is consistently informed or is it appropriate interpretation of function and purpose and how it is linking with culture uh, in which the work was created and again you know even in the function and purpose you will notice that candidate has titled the page function and purpose but there is content which is relevant to criteria c there is no harm they can do that uh, but uh, as long as the work is consistent uh, the function and purpose is informed insightful uh, they are going to achieve highest mark rank now some reminders before starting to mark and guide students for criteria c cultural significance now header talks about analysis and evaluation so here i have seen a very common fault by the students and we have been writing this in all subjects uh, you know uh, reports that uh, you know our students start writing artistic biography or they start writing a uh, very generalized context which is not linking with the chosen work so make sure as a teacher we are guiding our students to write uh, a relevant uh, uh, cultural significance which goes very well with the uh, work which connects directly with the work and the cultural significance they can uh, talk about critic views they can uh, they should add social political artistic artist influence um and uh, they should cover three aspects cultural material as well as con uh, conceptual significance so this is the hardest uh, criteria i have seen that where students actually struggles a lot uh, but uh, you know uh, it's good it, as teacher i think we can gu guide them properly and they can achieve highest mark then so this is one of the example where you can see consistent informed and appropriate evaluation of material cultural socio political historical and religious significance is mentioned and again uh, you know uh, in every slide make sure they are keeping criteria e also in mind which is presentation how well they are using uh, pictures is the pictures quality good enough and uh, how they are linking uh, with the uh, you know maybe diagrams or maybe with arrows and all that graphic tools so some reminders before starting to mark and guide students for criteria d which is making comparisons and connections now in a very good study you will see uh, you know is often developed from introduction onwards so let's the good responses rely on repeating information from previous slides so make sure they are not taking some previous uh, you know uh, pointers from the previous slide and adding it there because that's not uh the similarities and differences between all three pieces they have chosen so teachers should um, guide their students and uh, uh, don't encourage them to write in a bullet points because uh, it hinders the critical analysis of connections so make sure when they are writing uh, com uh, comparison they should do critical analysis on the basis of all three works and uh, similarities and differences should be done in terms of formal analysis function and purpose and cultural significance of all three artworks this is the example of low mark uh, band sample uh, why i am showing you this because uh, as examiner many times i have seen there are so good responses but they lose marks in criteria d because they have done uh, just band band diagram and they show this uh, pointers which is Uh, not enough to get six marks. So in this uh, all samples, you will see that students have got one or two marks, or some have, some have also got zero because there is no comparison happening. It's just basically they have written some uh, pointers. That's it. So criteria E, I always tell my students these marks are for free because it carries six marks, and uh, here they have to. look at their presentation and see how visually it is impactful uh, how it is is it engaging are they using appropriate graphics use of illustrations or juxtaposition of imagery uh, so that may gives them full marks and another thing criteria e subject specific language so make sure you are giving your students uh, enough grocery glossary so that they can use it in their writing 
so uh, i just told you that uh, in ibo ib publishing that dot ibo or you will get huge amount of glossary so make sure you give them hard copy or maybe soft copy so they can always refer to it and uh, get full marks in this criteria which is 6 marks so this is a very good example of criteria d and e so as you can see that you know how well it is written and all the command terms are highlighted uh, headings very organized study uh, in depth and detailed analysis are done clear and cropped images so bold subject specific language which gives clarity to the examiner that yes this uh, work is uh, you know a student have used lot of uh, subject specific language so another example here where you know i think as teacher we should encourage our students to write introduction uh, with relevant information about the selected pieces and uh, they sh they they should write why they have chosen these artworks and uh, how these three artworks are connecting to each other maybe conceptually or visually and why they have chosen these artwork now this is criteria f this is only for hl students making connections to own art making process so here uh, i think uh, this criteria really matters a lot because it carries 12 marks and uh, this is basically the candidate has explained the outcome of their study and how the study has influenced their own art making so first of all we have to understand that criteria f is not similarities and differences between students own artwork and artist artwork so we are not going to uh, encourage that it's influence and inspirations many times students have written you know similarities how my work is similar to the artist work which is the wrong approach they might end up with uh, less marks like maybe for example 5 or 6 marks out of 12 uh, but always good if they write about influence they write about inspiration how they got inspired from this particular artist and their works and uh, students technical competency will not be marked we are not going to mark how well the technique has been used we will write we will see that how well connections very basic work um, uh, but the connections are very strong i think it's more than enough you shouldn't look at the technical part of it so 3 to 5 slides only please do not exceed the number of slides please note examiner will not mark extra slides so make sure they are just creating 3 to 5 slides more not more than that uh, they can either create one work and connect to all three works or either create three works and connect to all three works it's their choice uh, so that's it so this is one example of uh, criteria f uh, where student have made connection in terms of symbolism formal qualities cultural and conceptual thematic connections uh, so again you know you can see that how well the presentation has been done so uh, the main the connections are made in terms of inspiration not similarities and differences so it's very informed and meaningful connections okay now uh, i think it's enough talking i would really love you guys to interact with with each other now so uh, kripa can you please uh, make uh, breakout rooms and uh, uh, we share all these samples with uh, all the participants so sure. we'll have 5 to 7 minutes to discuss marking in the break breakout room and uh, ib samples kripa will share right now and uh, please write your uh, uh, comments on padlet so do not write really long justification you can just write one liner why you have marked Uh, this particular sample uh, three or four or whatever your justification is very little justification again another thing is don't you don't have to read the whole content you can just roughly go through and uh, decide your marking so please read uh, sample a uh, i have sl sample so criteria f won't be included here so till criteria e you can mark all right so i have dropped the link to the padlet in the uh, the chat box so you can click on that and now i will be creating uh, kripa data. can you can you please give them uh, you know maybe write to sh uh, share screen or something uh one person or do you want everybody to share their uh, maybe one person in each group 
Okay, but uh, you know what, Shali? When we send them to the breakout room, right? They mm -hmm. will be in the breakout room. We will be here. Okay. Uh, so you will not be able to see their screen. Once they come back, each group can have one volunteer who can talk about their discussions in the group. Okay, okay. That works, right? Yeah. All right. So I have opened all the breakout rooms. Uh, you All participants will see an invite to join. Please click on it. So one of you can uh, share that what the marking you have done and uh, uh, it's it's there is no problem if there is uh, you know your marking is not aligned with the definite marks that's totally acceptable because we have done it very quickly so uh, seven minutes are not good enough to you know go through the whole thing so uh, basically uh, I just want to have one person who will be the speaker and talk about that what marking they have done criteria A B C and uh, D and E. So, and why just one liner justification? Why it's this, that particular mark? So, shall we have a, a group one who is going to speak? Uh, in group one, actually, we couldn't uh, read the thing at all. It was very small and we were not able to enlarge it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so we were not able to mark it as such. I mean, we could only see the see the thing, but we were not able to even read one line about, I mean, you know, even okay, class. And what about other groups? They also face same problem? Yeah, actually just only could read the cultural context, but uh, maybe my other group members, we hardly got to talking. Okay. The, the we other, can, and we, we thought can. it was very good. But we were all, I, I had a question whether uh, uh, the student's response to the work should be here or we would consider if it's here for criteria or not? No, no, it's, it's a SL uh, response. So um, there is no criteria F. Okay. You, you just had to mark criteria A to E. Huh. So I'll just go through this uh, CS once again. So maybe, you know, if you haven't done marking, you can roughly mark. So you don't have to read the whole content. The point is here, even if you read two or one paragraph, you will get to know whether uh, the analysis are going uh, to be, uh, you know, it's looking more insightful or is it informed or is it, uh, you know, like low level. So you can make it out. Just go through. Definitely insightful. Yeah. Yeah. Well researched. I think this is well, I mean, it's nice. It's it's well written rather. Yeah, that's uh, really good that you liked it because this is checked by me. So, okay. Um, when I was marking this, I was very much impressed with criteria E, which is like presentation. It's very engaging for the, uh, you know, uh, reader to, uh, you know, understand and go through the whole uh, process. So as you can see here, graphic tools are used very well. The color yeah. combinations are very nicely handled. And uh, uh, the cultural connection is very much, you know, connecting with the chosen work. That's very important. And this is even, a common fault we have seen. Yes, uh, please speak. Yes, I know I was saying even the things that they marked, you know, the lines and also it's actually uh, annotated very well. So uh, just looking at it, you can understand, okay, okay they're talking about which part of it or where, which section. And so that, I like that part of a lot. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, it's even, you know, uh, if you see uh, the comparison part, so that's also done very much like critically and uh, which is beautiful to see. Uh, Shelly, will you be sharing this with us, the uh, sample? Yes, you can have this sample. It's actually taken from IB site only. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, Kripa has already shared with you. You can use them yeah. anytime. Yeah, the link is in the chat box. This is always going to be available for you. So you can always access this. Thank you so much. So I will also tell you that examiner's marking, definite mark is 29 out of 30. So uh, there is a justification why this uh, candidate lost one mark. Uh, it's basically some content was uh, generalized. Uh, 
for one or two paintings. So that's why the consistency was lacking. So here, I think this is very important for us to understand as teacher. Uh, if we feel that somewhere our students are writing very generalized context, so we have to make them understand that uh, this is not required. You know, uh, we are not going to, uh, you know, examiner will not mark you on the basis of generalized context. So it's always good if they uh, connect that context with the chosen artwork. So now, um, any question regarding this? Can you see my screen? I had a question regarding um, in-text citing citation. How important is it? It's very important. And, uh, you know, as a teacher, we, we should make sure that they are uh, writing uh, citation for the uh, quotes, which they are using in their uh, research. They are citing all the images and whatever is taken from directly from the uh, net they should use the citation on the same slide. That's really, really important because nowadays we have got instructed by the, uh, you know, plagiarized plagiarism team and our subject manager that, you know, you don't have to check whether this work is plagiarized or not. You just going, you are just going to raise an exception. If you find that uh, the citations are missing, we are just going to raise an exception. We are not going to check whether the work is plagiarized or not. So as a teacher, we have to, uh, you know, guide our students that this is really important for all three components, um, uh, basically all two components, uh, because exhibition, they don't require citation. But yes, if they're using anything directly from the link, I always tell my students, even in the description, you can mention that. So there is no harm. What about paraphrasing? Uh, paraphrasing is all right. They can do it for biography. Uh, like suppose they are adding little uh, biography about artist and they can use paraphrasing there. But again, you know, when they're writing cultural context, they're writing function and purpose. It's always good if they read it and write in their own words. Uh, I had a question. When we are talking about, uh, you know, the uh, artwork, making the connections between our uh, students' own artwork and the uh, three artists. Yes. At, uh, for that is uh, should they have it with uh, like you know like uh, if they just have one artwork which they have connected to all three artists that's fine or should they totally totally acceptable you know totally acceptable if they create one work connecting with all three works no issue no as issue. long as connections are strong connections are making sense visually as well as conceptually no issue Okay. But uh, sometimes what happens, students create work, they write about connections, but the connections look very superficial because the visual connections are mis missing. So okay. it's always good if you tell them, tell them to have visual connections as well. So, okay. yeah. Uh, so that means if, if supposing somewhere they, you feel that it's not enough, can we, we, we should take two works or something that they talk about or? Definitely they can have two works or three works. Uh, but I don't tell them to make four or five works because always no, that's it. there's yeah. not much to write then. Yeah, then then they will you know lack consistency. Okay. So it's always good if you can uh, you know guide them to make three works or either one work or two works. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. So any question regarding component one, please ask because right, I think this is the right time because we just have checked the sample and uh, we have seen that how well the whole process was done by the student. And I say, as I said, you know, in comparative study, it's our responsibility that we should uh, guide our students to choose the works. We should not give them total freedom that you can choose any work. You know, it's very important because sometimes they come up with very contemporary artists and they are not able to find enough information about that particular artist.
Shali, we have Gloria who's asking, could you please explain the clear distinction between criteria B and criteria C? Okay. And Danny, where do you want to add a hyperlink? Okay, now- um, Comparative study. Sorry, the hyperlink. Thank you. Okay. So criteria B, are you asking about mark descriptor? That how the award, uh, how the marking is done? Gloria, if you could unmute yourself. Uh, okay, yeah. we are asking about criteria B and C. Yes. Uh, so uh, criteria B is basically we are only talking about meaning, idea, theme of the work, how the signs and symbols has been used by the artist. Uh, we are not going to talk about cultural significance here. We're not going to talk about how artist got inspired, from which artwork he got inspired. For example, suppose a, a candidate has chosen Gurnika as a main piece. Now here, he's not going to write that uh, what is the uh, you know, a cultural context of this work. What is the, why the artist, uh, you know, created this piece? What, uh, you know, we are not going to write that, what is the influence, you know? We're not going to mention that. We are just going to mention how the symbols and signs has been used by the artist. We can also talk about, uh, is this work, uh, you know, uh, used for some purpose? Is this work was created by, you know, is it a commercial work that also come under function and purpose? But when we talk about influence, like Gurnika, how the bomb blast happened and how the artist got inspired. So those all inspiration comes in cultural context. And what is the significance of material? You know, like why Picasso used, uh, uh, you know, uh, monochrome colors. So what is the significance of that uh, material significance with the cultural context? So these are the things we are going to mention in cultural, uh, but in function, we are just focusing on meaning, purpose, symbols, signs. We're not going to talk about how, you know, the cultural context affected, impacted this particular piece. I hope this gives you clarity. Okay, we'll move to now component two. Sorry, one more question. I just wanted one more question, please. Uh, when we are taking the three artworks, supposing they're all three different artists and the student has taken three artworks of different artists, uh, the, the topic or the, this thing should be mentioned that they are, it is based on so-and-so or I mean, it all has to connect or can two be, uh, artworks be about something and the third one? Uh, no, it, it's always good if it should, actually it should connect visually or conceptually. Uh, because the reason is uh, if they have chosen landscape as one of the art and other two works are on portraits, so they won't be able to write so much similarities and differences between those three artworks. You know, no, they... like, sorry, no, what I mean, I don't mean that way. I mean, supposing like it's on a topic like women. So yes. do all three have to be women or could two be on women and one could be a portrait? Uh, so it means, you know, something like that. Where I think it's good if, if all three are women related, that will make more, uh, you know, sense or it will actually link very well with the, the whole thing. And it will be, uh, it's, it's suppose, you know, a student is choosing uh, war as a theme, okay, for right. example. So it's good if three artworks are based on war. So yeah. that would be really good comparison. So supposing there are two which are showing war and one is based on the effects of war. I mean, it yes. is but not exactly linked in the same way. That is what I mean. It's good yeah, there, can... there is no problem as long as they are able to make really good connections at the end. There oh. is no problem. They can choose works like that. But oh. sometimes what happens, some students, they choose one landscape and then one portrait and one something else. So then in that case, uh, comparative study becomes very superficial. You know, it becomes very like what he's trying to do. You know, they won't be able to make good connections. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So, Shali, I have a question here furthering to what Ziba has said, that suppose two artworks are on a similarity and the third one is a contrary to it, 
but something that furthers connections, you know, in the senses if you're taking two artworks for war and maybe one is about peace, you know, that can take it to a higher level. Is that a good idea? I'm just ask, thinking aloud about um, this. See, if, if, if you feel that those three works having good connections visually, I think uh, you can take it. Uh, but as long as I'm again saying same thing, because uh, it's very important for a candidate to write in a very consistent manner if they want to achieve highest mark. Then if you feel that these three works, uh, students will be able to write so much about comparison, because that's, that's the main thing, you know, when they come to criteria D, uh, this kind of works, maybe they won't be able to write so much about uh, artwork one and three, right? So they won't be able to write so much about two and three. They, they might write very good in one and two, but then they will lack consistency in three work. So uh, that's the reason actually I always tell my students to take similar kind of works, which where they can, you know, they will be very confident about criteria D. They will be able to write so much about that particular comparison. Yes. Thanks, Shali. Welcome. So now we have process portfolio, which carries 40% of assessment criteria. And these are the assessment criterions. So for HL, we have, uh, SL, we have nine to 18 slides. And uh, for HL, we have 13 to 25 slides. Although I have written here that the submitted work should be at least two different art making forms, which is not the requirement now due to COVID. Uh, so we, uh, what is process portfolio? We here actually it's a, it's a journey of student. It's uh, they, they, uh, they carefully select material which evidence their experimentation, exploration, manipulation and refinement of variety of visual art activities during their two years of program. So this is the form art, art making forms table, which is in the visual art guide. So as I just said that it's not the requirement now, but we can always refer to it when we are planning our curriculum, when we are planning that how many different mediums our students can explore. So skills, techniques, and processes, the possible evidences, drawings, their sketches, their planning, uh, their uh, you know, process, uh, the photographic record of sculpture process and uh, you know the ability to select and use material techniques and processes that are appropriate to their intentions. So how well they are using art, uh, you know, uh, materials and mediums uh, that we are going to mark. And as you can see here, descriptor one to three talks about some experimentation and lack purpose or intent. Uh, four to six. Uh, talks about some skills and techniques uh, with some purposeful, uh, you know, uh, intent, and then purposeful development and application of skills, techniques, and processes, which is inconsistent. Uh, deliberate and confident manipulation and development of skills, techniques, and processes that are sustained and realized the artistic intention. Again, consistency is very important here. So how they are you know, keeping the record of each and every, uh, you know, criteria or uh, in mind that is really important to get highest mark pen. This is another example of, this is the example of criteria A. As you can see here, how student has done compositional idea. So when we are marking this criteria, we are not just looking at the final out. We are looking at the whole process, the journey, you know, how the, the work, is uh, initial idea has been formed and how it come to final outcome. Again, when you have these kind of pages in your process portfolio, in students port, uh, process portfolio, it's always good you take a very good clarity picture, clear pictures so that examiner can read. If they have good writing, they can use it. Otherwise it's always good to type, which will be more visible. Now criteria B, critical investigation. Here uh, you can see the descript descriptor, six marks for this. If, if the um, connections with the artist is superficial, they won't achieve more than one to two mark. If it is adequate, three to four. If it is in depth, five to six. So evidence of critical investigation of artist and artwork, artistic genre, 
uh, communicating the students growing awareness of how this investigation influences and impacting their own art making process. So they are expected to critically engage with the work of other artists and allow this to inform their own art making practices. And uh, a critical investigation is not only artist influence, I would say that uh, they can be inspired from environmental issues, they can be inspired from social themes, that also comes under critical investigation. Uh, this is an example of critical investigation where student has um, taken Salvador Dali's work and how he's planning and how she's uh, using different mediums to uh, you know, connect with the artist. So connections are not only uh, in terms of a theme, it should be on the basis of visual. So because then it will become more stronger. So we have criteria C, communication of ideas and intention in both visual and written forms. So again, descriptor says that if, if it is rarely made uh, communications, then one to two mark adequately, three to four, effectively five to six. Now evidence of candidates ability to clearly articulate how their initial ideas and intention has been formed and developed and how they have assimilated technical skills, chosen media and ideas to develop their work. So we have criteria D, I have seen many students, they get very less marks in criteria D and uh, even in subject reports, it's very much mentioned. And uh, because review refining doesn't happen at the end when they are creating the work, it should happen from the beginning when they are planning their work, how they are using different, uh, you know, they are planning their background or maybe they are planning their composition. So how they are refining their ideas. So that's very important to understand. So the candidate's ability to refine and review selected ideas, skills and processes techniques to reflect on acquisition of skills and the development as, an, as a visual, art, visual artist. Now, this is a very good example I have where uh, you know, student is showing that how the composition he's planning and how the background will be connected to his own uh, personal experience you know, with the primary source. He's also planning patterns and textures. Now criteria E, which is presentation and subject specific language, evidence that the information is clear, conveyed clearly and coherently in a visually appropriate and legible manner, supported by the consistent use of appropriate subject specific language. Uh, so this is, uh, I think this, I always say that this marks for free. So if them, you're making very uh, visually appropriate and legible manner, you're making your presentation, you're using a lot of uh, subject specific language, you are going to achieve full mark. So descriptors talks that how, if it is limited or no clarity or no subject specific language used, they are going to get one mark. If there is some evidence with inconsistency, they are going to get two marks. And the portfolio conveys evidence clearly, coherently and appropriately. They are going to achieve three marks. If the evidence is clear, coherent and engaging, excellent use of appropriate language, uh, subject specific language, they are going to achieve four marks. Please go to that website, which I just told you that ibpublishing.ibo.org. You will get huge amount of glossary there. Please share with your students. I, you will not get it in even in uh, a visual art guide. So this is another example of uh, criteria E, visually creative and enhancing the impact of the work and re readers understanding. As you can see, very organized study headlines, headings are very much connected to each criteria, clear images, subject specific language is used, skills, techniques, processes has been showed. So now again, uh, do you want to go to breakout room or shall we just discuss uh, sample here? Uh, because discuss here because yeah, that would be better. Let's discuss the sample. Sorry? It's let's discuss the samples here. Yeah, that's, that would be better. I have one question. Sometimes uh, uh, the students take inspiration from essays, articles, not exactly the artworks. So for example, pandemic, they're taking inspiration from what uh, the havoc around them. 
And uh, can they, for example, use that as an inspiration and go explore the symbolism around it and the articles, the news, and see how it inspires their work? I had like using photographs, articles, and then combining it in form of their, you know, visual interpretation of the whole scenario. Yes, definitely they can do that. How that, you know, this pandemic is, uh, you know, impacting the whole world. When they are writing about it, it becomes critical investigation because it's it's the inspiration, you know. So uh, critical investigation is all about inspiration, how they're getting inspired from their own environment or a scenario, what is happening around them, their family, maybe their friends, their culture, everything uh, comes under uh, investigation. So I, it's totally acceptable. I, I always encourage my students to write about cultural connect because that's a key word in our IB visual art uh, as a, you know, uh, culture is a huge umbrella. So maybe uh, sometime if you feel that the work is very much connected to culture, they can write about cultural connect, which comes under criteria B. Thank you very much. Shali, can you put in that uh, website you said, the publishing thing in the chat? Yes, yes. Thanks. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. So again, I would say that we are not going to go to, you know, reading whole thing because it is going to take a lot of time. So we'll roughly mark uh, what you feel that uh, what students should get in criteria A, which is skills, processes, and techniques. So what do you think that uh, where it's going? Is it, um, you know, um, out of 12, how much you can give? Just roughly mark, you know, you don't go to anything. I would give a 10 at least, 10 or 11, because she's shown all the sketching and everything. Uh, but at the same time, I think in processes, we have to see that, uh, uh, you know, uh, how well media has been used. So that's also important. Okay. So then, then if, media, if we are seeing the use of media, then not necessarily the same marks. Yeah. And we have to see the consistency. If we are giving, I think, 11 and 10, 12 marks, that means uh, the work is consistent enough. So no, do you feel that uh, the consistency is there? No, so, no. Yeah. It's not. It's very hard to see the whole thing in detail. So you have seen the skills already. So now we have criteria B, which is uh, critical investigation. Now here, if you see the uh, candidate has stuck some pictures over here, uh, we don't know whose artist work is this. Um, from my point of view, it's, uh, the, uh, it's, it's a little superficial here. I have not read the text though, so I'm just looking at the visuals on it. And the citations are missing. I would clear what she's trying to say or he's trying to say. I, you know, uh, when I uh, guide my students, I always tell them to have critical investigation for each and every piece. So that there is consistency, you know, whatever work they create, they should have critical investigation based on each every each and every work. So that's the, I, I think here uh, it's lacking for every work you will not find critical investigation. Now here a student is talking about animal work, but uh, is it connected to any theme? Is it connected to any kind of social theme or environmental issues? So that is missing somewhere. 
here we can see the critical investigation. So, okay, it's a gallery, gallery visit. So this also comes under critical investigation in a way because if student has gone for some gallery and he got inspired from particular art piece and talking about that uh, experience is and then using it in his own work that also comes under that but I don't feel that connection is here. So here is talking about Farida Khalo. but not much written about Farida Kahlo's theme. When, uh, when the student has take, gone for a gallery visit, shouldn't the piece connect with their work? Just a gallery visit, how far is it? I mean, if they just put, it won't really show much, but if they've gone to a gallery and they've taken inspiration from that and they show, wouldn't that be better? Definitely, that would be better. Suppose I went to gallery and I saw Mona Lisa and I'm coming back here and I'm working on, you know, I got inspired from Mona Lisa work. So I think that that is the way uh, they should talk about. Otherwise, uh, gallery, uh, why they visit gallery, you know, what is the significance to visit gallery if it is not connecting with your art making? Right. So uh, what do you think in criteria B, how much you will mark? Just give random, it's fine even if our uh, marking is not uh, aligned with the principal examiner. So it's totally acceptable because they have gone through deeply, they have read it, read the whole process uh, in a very, you know, they have read it properly, but we are just going through very randomly. So just give marking in your own way. If you feel that it should be five, give five, otherwise less, anything. So we have communication of ideas and intention, which is criteria C. Here some, uh, you know, uh, observations are written about the work. That how artists got inspired from this particular piece. Each page reflects like one artist is one student's work. This is uh, whole, uh, yes, one student work. Uh, how about the other pages? There are different students, right? No, 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 no. This is whole one process portfolio. Okay. One student work. You know, the connection somehow is not being seen between the students' work. Something is very, very bad and something is okay. I mean, you know that... Um, I don't know how to put it, but there's no consistency in the whole yes, thing. Yes, yes. There is a lacking consistency. Another thing is, uh, if you look at all the pages, uh, you know, somehow I feel that student should cite his own work also. You know, like suppose uh, the work created by a student should be mentioned, my work, pencil shading on paper. These are the small little things are very much impacting our criteria E. Okay, ramp, referencing, how they are they referencing their own work, how well they are organizing the whole uh, process portfolio. So that also comes under that. So this is uh, critical investigation, but how it is impacting students work that we need to see. Yeah, here we can see some links maybe. So communication of ideas and intention, C and D, refinements. Do you think that in, in, enough refinements are shown in the works? No, not really. Not, not really. really. So maybe achieving very less in uh, review refinement. So I will also show you the examiner's marking. Okay, here. 
so skill uh, students have student have achieved 7 mark out of 12 so i think which is i think it's fine because skills are not that bad it's good and when we are marking these criteria we i think each uh, each criteria we have to mark separately uh, maybe student get very good mark in one criteria and lose in other so that's totally acceptable criteria b uh, three mark yeah this was expected uh, because the connections are missing somehow criteria c four so there are some initial ideas but not consistent enough to achieve six marks there is some unevenness in the manner that the portfolio addresses this criteria Uh, the work demonstrate an effective and consistent process of reviewing and refining ideas skills and processes and techniques but the candidates reflections and evaluation is mostly descriptive or superficial so we couldn't read the whole thing uh, but it's superficial according to the examiner uh, the portfolio conveys some evidence clearly or coherently however this is inconsistent some range of visual evidence some inconsistent or elementary use of subject specific language okay another point is uh, it's mentioned here none of these include adequate reference referencing prompting this work to be raised an exception in rmsser to be investigated for academic honesty so make sure your students are um, writing uh, you know referencing for each and every work they have selected for the process portfolio or comparative study so that's very much required any question on this process portfolio and we have experienced uh, examiners here i know that so please you can also uh, give your suggestions about this component i would i would love to hear from you guys also you know if you have any suggestions for this process portfolio we'll learn from each other actually i really like this uh, workshop of yours and we should keep having more of these you know it 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 acts as a reminder to us also as teachers because uh, very often while we are teaching we may, you know that points that we may forget to tell the students so this i think it is acted as a very good reminder for me oh this point i should stress on you know that kind of thing thank you yeah, so much same same uh, here i felt the same uh, in fact I, maybe this is asking a lot maybe we could um, share the recording of this workshop for future references i think we probably possible. do that i think kripa will do that Yeah, we we'll definitely share the recording. It's going to be available right next to the session. You'll have a uh, on the website uh, next the session details. You'll have a button that says "Watch the session." It'll be available from tomorrow. Uh, could we also have a group where we we could mean a WhatsApp group or something where we could you know uh, be in touch with everyone and many times there are certain things you you have a question on so then you can ask each other. something like that would that yes, be possible yes it's it's i think it's a very good idea we can share yeah. our yeah we can make a whatsapp group yeah, we can put our mobile numbers on the chat if you want and then you all can accordingly definitely i think it's a very good idea to keep in touch with everyone yeah i would be glad i'm really Thank happy that yeah. uh, i'll happy. write my number also So someone can take a screenshot of all the numbers and then form a group, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we don't have much time because I am getting, uh, um, you know, some messages from Kripa. <laughs> so we have to take uh, keep that time recording also. So time in mind. So we have task three, which is exhibition. So here, uh, students submit selection of resolved artworks from their exhibition. and uh, the selected pieces should show evidence of their technical ac accomplishments during the course and understand the material the use of materials ideas practices uh, appropriate to visual communication so as you can see in the slide that all nine marks and it's an internal assessment criteria so as teacher we have to make sure we mark correctly 
we we shouldn't overmark and we shouldn't you know uh, we have to mark really carefully because that can create a lot of problem for other students whose work is not selected so um, sl we have uh, four to eight works but now latest change four to seven um, because of the covid situation and the 500 characters for uh, exhibition text and we have a uh, rational for uh, sl student 400 words maximum hl student it's eight to ten works and uh, exhibition text and rational 700 words so what is uh, coherent body of work i always give example of uh, van gogh to my students because you can see that how each piece is very much connected to each other you know it's, it's a re resolved pieces either you see starry night or you see bedroom or you see sunflower you can see the connection between each and every piece. I think that's the best example to give. And uh, uh, what is the evidence curated this rational exhibition text, exhibition photographs, and coherent collections of works which stated artistic intentions and communicate clear thematic and stylistic relationship across individual pieces. So the marking band is here, the descriptor. One, two, three for minimal communication of thematic or stylistic. Uh, intentions and adequate for four to six and effective for seven to nine. Again, consistency is very important in each and every criteria. So technical competence, as I said, we when we are marking this component, we are marking each criteria separately. So our criteria A should not impact criteria B and C and other criteria. So when we are marking technical competence, might student might get very good marks in technical competence, but lose marks in a coherent body of works. It's, it's possible. So how we mark it, we look at the exhibition photograph, individual artworks, application, manipulation, and refinement of skills to reach highest technical competency. So conceptual qualities, again, um, the imagery, signs, and symbols has been resolved to realize the function, meaning, and purpose of the artworks as appropriate to stated intention. Now, evidences are rational exhibition text and exhibition photograph. So you can see the mark descriptor here, one, two, three, minimal elaboration of ideas, intentions, and minimal use of imagery, signs, and symbols, and uh, visually elaborate ideas, themes, or concept. Uh, to reach to the point of real, uh, adequate realization. And then we have seven to nine, uh, which talks about uh, effective use of uh, uh, themes and elaboration ideas, visually elaborate, and uh, the subtle use of uh, imagery, sign symbols with effective communication of artistic intention. So this rational, I always tell my students, this is for free. So you should always write uh, you should keep some points while writing uh, uh, criteria D, rational, uh, HL 700 words, SL 400. So when they are writing this in rational, make sure they are talking about their intentions and uh, how this intention in the space made available to the student, you know, how appropriately they are writing these attentions. Successful selection and exhibition of artworks within the designated space as appropriate to stated intention. Evidences, rational, exhibition text, exhibition photograph. Now, HL for HL, they are also adding one more point, which is considering and explaining the impact of their work on different audiences. SL, they don't write that. Only HL student, they focus on this. SL, they focus on uh, how they are in, arranging the exhibition and which is stated to their uh, intentions. Now, these are the very important points, how we have to mark. First of all, we do not assess any audio com component. Uh, we are not going to listen to the sound. Uh, and another thing, candidate must, must not be penalized if they only present the minimum required number of works. Even if they have done minimum required number of works, that shouldn't impact their work. The space where the exhibition is presented must not influence the marking. Candidate must not be put at disadvantage because of the space which is uh, given to them. Before starting to assess the exhibition files, you must read the rational first in order to understand the intention and overall idea of the candidate. 
recommended sequence in terms of assessment criteria is to start rational first, which is criteria D, then assess the work for coherence, which is A, conceptual qualities C, both of which related to rational, and finally, technical competence, which is criteria B. Now, submission of resolved work, candidate who fail to submit minimum required number of work will not achieve a mark higher than six in criteria A, B, and C. So uh, when we are marking, we should make sure that we are keeping these points in mind and how we are checking it, how we are keeping order in mind and marking each criteria. Now, it's a major role for all teachers to be familiarized with criteria and how we implement to give to feedback to our students. So please do not mark uh, holistically. Each criteria will be marked independently, individually. So uh, I have taken one uh, you know, comment from principal examiner from my subject report, May 2021. Generous marking by many teachers is still an issue. Some teachers vastly overestimated their students' performance and awarded high marks for work that did not merit them. So make sure when you are marking, you have to forget these are my students. You have to mark uh, according to the assessment criteria. Forget about them. Just look at the work and mark. And uh, you should also read IA feedback for more clarity in examinertraining.ibo.org. So you will find so many comments on by principal examiner and uh, even by uh, team leaders uh, on this site. So now we'll have, uh, I'll share with you the component three. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. So this is the rational written by HL student. So again, I would say don't read the whole thing. Just go through and see whether you feel that this, this is um, talking about audience here or, or, or the student is talking about the arrangement of works. He's going to put it on the exhibition. So just see that. And this is out of three marks, criteria D. So this is the order. We should uh, see first rational, and then we should move to other exhibition text and everything. If I uh, see, because I have read this already, so I think it's uh, uh, all of these pieces have been created to reflect some, you know, very little is mentioned about that, how the viewers uh, played a very important aspects here. So, so we have to see again consistency here, whether you feel this is consistent enough to achieve three marks full. So current body of work, which is criteria A, what do you think what should be you know, given to the student because we are not marking here technical competency here. We are just going to see whether these works are resolved or not. For exhibition, they should have two images, not one, right? So is it only one? Uh, now, because of uh, COVID situation, okay. IB has uh, recommended even one, they are taking one picture okay. also. There is no problem. There is no penalty, you know. They are not going to penalize students for that. I don't think it's resolved. I mean, um, it's not coherent in the, not everything. Yes. Even I feel that because I feel somewhere, you know, uh, there is no compositional values have been kept in mind while creating these pieces. And even if you see this uh, work, which is, I think, inspired from Mark Rothko, is not connecting with other pieces. It's like something out of the box, like coming. And the curator's yeah. rationale is also sort of uh, not specifically pointing to this. Yeah. 
and even the audience wasn't mentioned i mean viewer she yeah, mentioned there was only so, one liner uh, mentioned yeah before. it's not how it's connecting is not showing yeah okay these are the marks given by teacher so teacher has given eight mark so it's it's eight out of nine it's too high uh, for criteria b nine marks I mean full marks is given criteria c it's seven marks which is conceptual qualities and then criteria d which is rational three marks so we have to look at uh, teachers marks and then we'll go to examiner marks also so these are the individual pieces these are teachers comments these are descriptions uh, again you know when i was reading this descriptions i felt that somewhere you know uh, signs and symbols has not been discussed you know that's lacking in students work i don't see the coherence also in the work i mean this seems totally different the cherry seem totally different than this i mean mark roth ko coming yeah so so shali i just like to come in here and just ask a question because i can't read much of the stuff mm -hmm. but is has the student used mark rothko or the color symbolically that's what i'm thinking about and maybe um, that's what the student has conveyed yeah you can yeah. you can read here it's written do more is a conceptual adaptation of greed offering an abstract commentary on the human desire or more than one needs greed is a problem again you know uh, it's talking about greed but how the color is symbolically used for greed is not clear enough you know how this red color is symbolizing is this red color symbolizing greed or what so i, I understood that the color is meant to symbolize but may, yeah reading this the connections of red to the symbolic use of color is somehow i feel yeah. it's it's very superficial you know connecting very superficially and even if if you look at this work i feel that it's very much like secondary based one image that's it no other aspects has been keeping in mind while working on the resolved work it's not looking resolved work this is the detail of this piece again shelly can you explain when you say sign and symbols are lacking so can you just speak about it that how it is lacking i just want to know hear from you you know if you see uh, these works uh it's written that yes deadly sins of sloth inspire this monochrome piece uh, but somehow i feel that you know it's it's very superficially connected you know and the student could have used something in the background maybe some creative maybe compositional values should be kept in mind while working on these pieces so i feel that it's written but it's not connecting very well with the image looking superficial so this is another piece here there is little connection like if you see the trouble expressions on a visually prominent face not only reflects the egoistic quality of jealousy but portrays it uh, in a light which communicates both its influence and its familiarity there are some aspects have kept in mind while writing about signs and symbols but it's not consistent enough to reach higher mark rank i feel not for every work it has kept in mind so uh, shall i move to examiner's marking yes hi shali kripa here just coming back because in the interest of time we we've, we've overrun our time that we have uh, we've had but you can probably still continue for another 10 minutes or so shali is that okay yeah that's fine that's perfectly all right thank you so much kripa <laughs> right can you see no now i have so many files open in my <laughs> laptop so sorry for that can you see now yes yeah so 
you can see here school marks are these 27 marks and examiner has given these marks now because of the school marking uh, i think uh, you know whole group of students are going to suffer right so that's really important for us to understand how marking is so important when we are marking internally because it will be moderated by the principal examiner or examiner so uh, make sure when you are marking it should be done properly it should be kept in mind each and every criteria what is the mark band what is the descriptor and then why we are marking and i totally agree that examiner has given five mark for coherence uh, body of works because i feel that resolved works are not there it's not looking resolved works so you can also give your opinion if you feel somewhere examiner is very harsh in marking so you can also talk about it seven for criteria b i agree with the first three marks the last one i feel maybe a two could be given because she has written about each piece uh okay i agree it's not it does not deserve three yeah uh, you know uh, but it's not that nothing has been mentioned about the work yeah like there was little uh, mentioning about uh, you know uh, the arrangement of work and yeah. the viewers point of view right. was written so that's so, the only place i mean if i were marking it i would have marked a uh, two over there the rest i agree with all the marks so we can read the uh, uh, the justification which is given given by the examiner the rational only partially justifies the selection of exhibition exhibited works uh, there is only partially justification of the arrangement there is a little justification for the relationship between artworks and the viewers within the space made available to the student so this is the justification given by the examiner so any question sorry can you explain how like if the the difference in the moderator's marks versus the teacher um so does that automatically mean that every single other student that is marked by that teacher is going to be dropped by a certain amount uh, amy could you repeat the question yeah. charlie uh amy i think you are on mute yeah uh, i think there was a lot of disturbance in the background so okay yeah um uh, can you hear me now yes okay i was actually just going to type it up so i don't really understand how if maybe you could explain how the marks for all of the students are are then moderated down like how do they decide how much they're just automatically going to take off of the top of each teachers if they over grade uh see if you that's why i'm saying you know when we are marking as teacher it's our responsibility uh to mark you know very very uh, you know in terms of descriptors because some sometime what happen i know one student and i think yeah everything is done very nicely but i am not following the descriptor so when i am following that my, my marking is going to be very accurate with the examiner from my experience from last many years our marking haven't changed for a year you know whatever we gave mark uh, it either one or two marks here and there but overall marking was always uh, matching with the examiner so if you see in this uh, case examiner uh, uh, teacher has given eight marks nine marks for uh, technical competency so whereas i feel that you know nine is too much Uh, to give because nine means uh, we have seen many examples where you know um, the technical part is very strong so nine means uh, perfect so i don't feel that uh, this is really nine so somewhere you know teachers marking is very lenient so and the examiner and ibis they select samples and then they uh, moderate again you know examiner moderate again so these samples so if a teacher goes in and all, all of the moderated samples are like really high they would go in and moderate the rest of them or they would just automatically knock everything down uh, they will keep everything down then uh, they are not going to mark other samples uh, suppose they have selected top 
responses, middle two responses, and low two responses. So they are going to check only these six samples. Maybe you have 20 students. So they are going to just check these six samples. If you top marking, suppose you have given 27. So they are giving 18. So they are going to give everyone 18, whoever is coming under uh, seven. No? So they won't check other samples. So that's where, you know, we have to be very careful as teacher. We, we have to mark them really, uh, you know, with a lot of uh, uh, reading and everything we have to do and then make the judgment. What we do as a teacher in the department, we moderate. You know, we have two, three teachers here. We, everyone gives marking and then we share with each other why we are giving this much and then we talk about it. So another thing I will talk about academic honesty issues. This issue we have been talking as principal examiner, even in, uh, in many meetings that this issue is really, really important to sort it out. So, and we write in our subject uh, reports also that in-text citation is very important for all components. So make sure whenever they are writing biography, they should add citation there on the same slide. If they are writing any quote by the artist, they are adding the citation on the same page. So the use of Turnitin is the easiest way to run a quick check on suspect text that we always use. And students should not copy and paste content directly from the link, not even artist biography. They should rephrase it. And we use in school MLA citation, but you can use any format because IB has not given any prescribed format to cite. So that's your choice, what kind of uh, format you want to use. So another thing is students are expected to include name of the artist, time, title, year, medium for each and every piece which they select. And they should also reference their own artwork. They should write my work, media used, all those things when they're talking, when they have taken work for a comparative studies, for instance, but they shouldn't write their own name. So they can write my work. So that's the requirement. And you will see this paragraph, which is mentioned in our guide. So read this, you will get to know that how it is so important for us to uh, give this uh, information to our student that plagiarism is a big issue and we don't have to we don't want any student go to that plagiarism team. You know? Their work goes to plagiarism team. So uh, that's it from my side. I hope you enjoyed and it was an engaging workshop. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Shelly, uh, uh, can you put your number you, down? On that? Definitely, I'll do that. I'll get in touch with you. And even the publishing site, yeah, Shaili? Yes. Thanks. I'll just paste that. And please email if possible. Okay. Okay. It's... Any, any, anyone who wants to discuss anything about all these three components? Anything you have an idea? How is your experience as examiner? What do you feel? Because I think some of you are examiner. Yes, actually, uh, as a, I mean, I'm, uh, I am an examiner and I agree with you that many times, like last time also, there were, especially during COVID, I find that the marks are escalated a lot. And I think it is also due to the reason the teachers feel sorry for the students. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I have read through these uh, rationals where the students have mentioned that seven of their family members died. And so, you know, you, you do feel bad. So I think for that, maybe we should consider as I think, but then we, we can't because then we have to stick to the criteria. Definitely. So, so I so, have. Uh, could I ask a question, Shali? Yes, yes. Please. Hi. Um, you know, I'm. I kind of see it from a different perspective. I'm not an examiner. I've just been teaching, and I've been teaching the diploma now for quite some time. And what was kind of the expectation six years ago seems to the expectations on the students seems to have increased dramatically. And the students that I had six years ago achieved sixes, and today I kind of believe their work would have achieved a four. 
And I'm seeing, uh, I don't want to criticize, but I see massive inconsistencies between the examiners. And recently, like, and then this is not really the topic for here, but I would love to hear your opinion because of your position. And so for example, one of my incredibly strong students who achieved six and sevens in all of her subjects achieved a three for her comparative study. This was a huge shock to me because I thought it was really quite awesome. Um, and I told her she would achieve a minimum of a five, unfortunately, thinking it would be that. And um, the weak student who I thought would get a two achieved a five. So for me, and I only had a few children last year, and for me, I don't know, it seems to be quite a subjective, I mean, it is a subjective subject, right? And you're, you're basing the artwork on other people's opinions, and not, I don't know how much about the, I know you say it's about the criteria, but for me, I've been feeling like there's quite some inconsistencies with the grading, because I don't understand why my student would get such a low grade, but she did so well, she wouldn't have it regraded. Um, because she got the points to get into her university and it would cost her to have it be great. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know what I'm asking really. I'm just kind of like, for me personally, I'm getting disheartened because I feel that the grading is becoming, it's, it's very, you, you, I know that the grades go to lots of different people, but it seems that those people that are grading don't seem to be completely consistent and I'm struggling with that. Yeah, I can, I totally agree with you because uh, sometimes what we uh, predict for our student, it goes down, it's very disheartening. And, uh, you know, there are uh, sometimes I have seen some cases because I get EUR papers. And uh, believe me, I get shocked sometimes. Uh, some examiner give uh, 18 marks and I have increased marks into 27. So I am actually, I was very shocked. How can examiner give so low marks to such a good study? Sometime, uh, you know, we, we in the webinars also, we also talk about that, you know, we should, um, we should not look at our knowledge when we are marking. We shouldn't have to see that how much we know about the artist. We have to see their level of understanding. We have to see they are 16 year kid. So we have to mark what they have uh, written, what is their understanding. We have to mark according to that. But for examiners, some examiners, it becomes really difficult. They, they are so strict, but now we have a seed system. They go out, but uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. Sometimes it's very disheartening, but uh, um, it shouldn't happen that if you have given five and it should reach to three because it's a huge gap. So I think somewhere maybe uh, EUR actually helps. Inquiry. I, would, I would love to share it with you because I had it regraded by a friend who's in a comparative study examiner and she said it would have got a five and actually said the exam, examiner must have been drinking whiskey when she marked it. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so disheartened I by know. this. And That's I not... Know. But um, Shelly, I agree with her because sometimes it, it, things are not really... I mean, you know, and students get disheartened when they are not marked well because then they feel, should we take visual arts? I mean, we, we don't know for sure what marks we're going to get. So we might as well take a subject where we are more certain about the marking. You know, yeah. I've heard many uh, teachers talk about this also. Definitely. Even uh, one of my students also got four. He was like seven student, but all together he got seven. His comparative study was four. And I was shocked. How can he get four? You know, so I was, I told him to go for UR. Then he said, ma'am, I already got seven. I don't want to check my component now. So that was making sense. So, but uh, even I was shocked, how can this child get four? Because he was getting full marks in every component. Like process portfolio, he got full mark, 30 or 34 out of 34. But he got four in um, uh, component one. So I, I can understand. This is something very... Really... Is it something that's being addressed? Because it seems like the students are being kind of penalized and the teachers... And to be honest, I've got students that are refusing to take out a diploma now because they've seen the changes and it's it's yeah it's really it's really tough and is there something happening in the background in IB that you know of where the examiners are coming together and actually becoming more consistent because yeah just I know I'm running over time and I'm asking completely different topics and apologize for that and, but it's something that's really bothering me at the moment and maybe a few others as well. I think this is uh, totally subject to uh, subject to that's why we are having this trouble otherwise as you said, that there would be more certainty for if it was some other subject. Uh, yes, I think, unfortunately, we will have to live with this. 
I think so too. Unfortunately. Okay, now um, I'm I'm so happy to interact with you all. It was beautiful session, and you were all very good audience, wonderful audience. And uh, now I'll go back to Kripa <laughs> because she's waiting for me when I'll finish. <laughs> Not really, but but you know, uh, because we have a total walkthrough that's happening now, and I've already dropped the link in the chat box. But thank you so much, Shelly. Uh, I think I don't need to say it. We know that everyone's going back with useful insights, and they all want to keep in touch with you. uh i will definitely share all these numbers with you so maybe you can think about creating a whatsapp group or you know how you want to take this discussion forward um and uh like i said there is a walk through that's happening right now so you may feel free to join that session uh i'd also like to invite you to attend the group for panel which is happening uh at 11:30 gmt i've also dropped the link to that as well uh yeah so that so that's that's about it and if if you're interested to know more about you know how you can use toddle at your school we're doing a quick uh, walk through but we you, if you wish you can also go for a personalized demo for that i am going to just now share a link with you in the chat box you can uh, fill in a form and you can um, have a personalized demo from team toddle uh, that's uh it from uh as thanks so much ali once again uh thanks everybody thank for joining so me i'm i'm so i'm feeling so good to be here thank you so much everyone thanks everybody thank you so much ali bye bye everyone bye. thank you thank you